this video is to give you a little bit of information about circles. And in order to know a little bit about circles, you need to know two formulas, the midpoint formula and the distance formula. The midpoint formula is really all about finding the middle of something. Just like if you were going to find the middle grade between two grades, it's an average. In order to average, you add and divide by two in this case, two grades, two points. Add and divide by two. People mess up on the midpoint formula because they subtract. So remember, you're really finding an average. I'm going to find the middle, the midpoint of this segment. According to the midpoint formula, I'll add the two x coordinates, negative three plus negative five, and divide by two. And then I'll add, I'll average the y coordinates, seven plus negative four divided by two. That gives me a midpoint of negative eight divided by two, comma, seven plus negative four is three divided by two. Or I might say that the midpoint in this case is negative four, comma, 1.5. Now let's graph that and see if it seems reasonable. Negative 1, 2, 3, 4, up 1.5, puts me about right here. I believe that could be the midpoint. It looks reasonable from our graph. So the midpoint is negative 4, comma, 1.5. To find a midpoint, you average the x's and you average the y's. If we want to do one more thing on this and find out how long is that segment, what's the distance from here to here, if I plug into this formula, it does not matter which point I call x1, y1, or x2, y2. But if you're used to saying the top is x1, y1, and the bottom is x2, y2, and if you plug into this formula, negative 5, minus negative 3, it looks like this, negative 5 minus negative 3 squared plus y2 minus y1, negative 4 minus 7 squared. On the distance formula, you subtract the x's and y's. That gives us the square root of negative 5 minus negative makes it plus 3 squared. And negative 4 minus 7 is negative 11 squared. So the square root of negative 5 plus 3, that's negative 2 squared plus negative 11 squared. That's the square root of 4 plus 11 times 11 is 121 or the square root of 125. That's the exact length of that segment. Now, if we have a radical like this that has the possibility of being reduced, reduce it. That makes it five times 25 and five times five. So there's a pair that's a perfect square. We could take one out and leave one underneath. So five times the square root of five is the exact length, the distance from these two points. Now, here's another way that you could look at it. Instead of memorizing the Pythagorean theorem, if you decided, in order to get from here to here, I've got to go out a distance and then up a distance and really, to find that, I'm looking for the hypotenuse of a right triangle. So I need to know how long is this leg, and I need to know how long is this leg, and then leg squared plus leg squared will equal hypotenuse squared. Well, if I want to know how long this is, I've got to go from an x value of 3, of negative 3, I'm sorry, over to an x value of negative 5. How far is it from negative 3 over to negative 5? That's 2. We got a negative 2 over here. It doesn't really matter because after you square it, it turns positive anyway. How far is it from negative 4 up to 7? What's that total distance? 7 minus negative 4. It's a distance of 11. 
So what do we end up doing here? If we were going to use Pythagorean theorem, 2 squared plus 11 squared equals d squared. If you solve Pythagorean theorem, 2 squared plus 11 squared equals d squared, you're going to get in the same place that we got right here. So 4 plus 121 equals d squared. 125 equals d squared. Take the square root of both sides, and you will get d equals 5 square roots of 5. So two formulas you need to be familiar with, midpoint and distance. And then you also need to know the definition of a circle. So you should write this on your notes. A circle is a set of points in a plane. And all of these points have the same thing in common. They're all equidistant, the same distance from a fixed point called the center. You all have to pretend that this is a really good circle. Um, so if I measure from center to here, that distance is the same as from the center to here, from the center to here from the center to here, and all of these points that are the same distance away from the center make up the circle. The distance from the center to any point on the circle is called the radius. For some reason, somebody once upon a time decided that we like to name centers using the letters HK. So we'll stick with that. And if I pick some other point on the circle, to get to that point, starting from the origin, I'd have to go out some x value, up some y value. I'm going to name this point x, y. I would like to know that's the radius. And I want to know what its length is. How long is the radius for the circle that I have labeled right here? Well to find out how long something is, or the length of it, the distance between these two points, we're going to use our distance formula. We know that if I really, what's going on here, the, to find the length of r, it's like using the Pythagorean theorem. I could do this, I could, I could build a right triangle here. In order to know how, how long this is, it's Whatever this x value is, minus this x value, we're going to call it x minus h. To find out how long this one is, I subtract the y values. I'm going to call this length y minus k. Now use what you know about the Pythagorean theorem. If I want to describe the length of r, I could start out like this. Um, leg squared, x minus h squared plus the other leg squared, y minus k squared will equal the radius squared. Actually, if we stop right there, this is the standard form equation of a circle. If I need to know the radius, then I just take the square root of both sides. But this is the standard form of an equation of a circle that has its center at h, k, some point right here. If I ask you to write the standard form equation of a circle that has its center at 0, 0, then It would be the length of the radius could be described as x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals r squared. So if the center of the circle happens to be at 0, 0, I would probably reduce this and just call it x squared plus y squared equals r squared. But this is kind of a special case. This is one where the center is at 0, 0. You have this example on your notes. It says, example 1, find the center and the radius of a circle if you know this is its equation. If the equation of the circle is x minus 4 squared 
plus y plus 3 squared equals 36. x minus 4 tells us that the center is no longer at 0, 0. In parentheses, it shifts, opposite of what you think. So it shifts right 4. And in parentheses, it's opposite of what you think. So plus 3 really means it shifts down 3. So I can immediately look at this and know that the center of this circle is right 4, down 3. That puts me at 4, negative 3. And this number right here is always the radius squared. So the radius squared equals 36. In order to find the radius, I have to take the square root of both sides. The square root of r squared is just r. The square root of 36 is 6. So when you have an equation in standard form, you can look at it and immediately know the center and the radius. Here's another one. Example 2. I've got to have some room over here, so I'll come back to this part. On example two of your notes, you're asked to find the center and the radius of a circle if this is its equation. x squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 48. x squared all by itself means there's, there has not been any shift left or right. So the center is at 0, comma, y plus 1 means there has been some shift in the y direction. In parentheses, opposite of what you think should happen. So plus 1 means the circle really shifted down 1. So right 0, down 1 puts the center at 0, negative 1. And the radius squared always shows up in the circle. The radius squared is 48. So in order to find the radius, we take the square root of both sides and simplify the radical. The square root of r squared is just r. Some of you can look at this and say, mm, 48, that's 16 times 3. Square root of 16 times square root of 3 is 4 square roots of 3. But remember, if you need a little help, you can do this. 2 times 24, 2 times 12, 2 times 6, 2 times 3. 2 times 2 will come out. So that makes it 4, and the square root of 3 has to stay under the radical. One more thing let's talk about. Sometimes an equation is not going to be given to you, a circle is not going to be given to you in standard form. Sometimes it might be given to you in what we call general form. The general form of an equation of a circle looks like this. x squared plus y squared plus d times x plus e times y plus f equals zero. In other words, when everything is all on one side and it equals zero, it's in what we call general form. So example three says, here's the equation of a circle in standard form, x minus four squared plus y plus three squared equals 36. The advantage of the equation in standard form is that you can immediately look at it and tell me the center and the radius. Because when you see not just x squared plus y squared equals r squared, you see x minus 4. That means this circle is not centered at 0, 0. It has shifted. x minus 4 tells us that it has shifted right 4. y plus 3, because it's in parentheses, it's opposite of what you think. So it has shifted down 3. If I ask you to tell me the center of this circle, while it's in standard form, it's easy. Right 4, down 3, means that the center is at 4, negative 3. And the radius 
Radius squared shows up here. The radius squared for this circle is 36. Take the square root of both sides. The radius is 6. So it is a, if you need to graph a circle, it's a real advantage to have it in standard form. It's not always going to be given to you in standard form. It may sometimes be given to you in general form. So if you need to put this equation in general form, you just have to expand it out. In other words, multiply x minus 4 times x minus 4 plus y plus 3 times y plus 3 equals 36. If you multiply this, you get x squared minus 4x and another minus 4x and last times last plus 16. So x squared minus 8x plus 16 plus, when you multiply these, you'll have y squared plus 3y and another 3y. Last times last plus 9. So y squared plus 6y plus 9 equals 36. In, in general form, the x squared and the y squared terms come, are written at the beginning. So change the order. x squared plus y squared. And then it's followed by the x term, then the y term. We're writing things alphabetically. So minus 8x plus 6y. And then finally, we've got things to combine. We've got 16 plus 9, so that'll make it plus 25 equals 36. We're almost there, but not quite. In order to be in general form, it has to equal 0. So now subtract 36 from both sides. And so general form is x squared plus y squared minus 8x plus 6y and 25 minus 36 will give us negative 11 equals 0. This is the general form. And the standard form right here and the general form are two different names for the same circle, two different equations that give us the same circle. They look completely different. This one is an advantage if you need to graph it because you can see the center and the radius. But sometimes you will be given the equation in general form. So you need to go, you need to be able to go back and forth from one to the other. We've gone from standard to general. In another video, I'll show you how to go from general back to standard.